Okay, so the, in this problem, we're using a motor to drive a large fan. And so this motor, you can see that the, the load has a variable torque. And so this is a problem with a variable motor torque and a variable load torque. So we're going to start by figuring out the motor torque. So let's draw our equivalent circuit. So you see here that we have a terminal voltage of 120. And then we're going to have a resistor, an inductor, and a back EMF. And then this is going to be Ke omega, Ra, and La. So if we look at these parameters, here is our Ke, here is our Ra, and here is our inductance. So this is equal to 0.4. We're going to be going into the Laplace domain. So this is equal to SL, which is equal to 0. zero 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 six s okay and then this is equal to zero point one five zero nine omega okay so basically if we look at this in so we're going to if we look at this in a block diagram we see that our voltage creates a current and the current is related to the motor torque okay and then we're going to subtract off our loss torques and then we are going to <coughs> uh, create a and then from there we're going to go to our omega through our differential equation now this omega here is going to get subtracted off from here because of our back EMF. Okay, so let's get started with this. So we see that our voltage, sorry, our current is going to be 120 minus 0 0.1509 omega divided by the impedance. And so we're just going to multiply that times 1 over Ra plus SLA. So this is 120 minus 0 0.1509 omega times 1 over 0 0.4 plus 0 0.0006S. OK, so let's go to LT it's to simulate to do this. So we're going to start with this piece here, and then we're going to take this piece is going to be a sum, and then we're going to multiply it times this transfer function. Okay, so we're going to come over here, and we're going to grab a step. This is our step voltage. So we're going to step up at time 0. The initial value is 0. And then we're going to apply 120 volts. And this is our VA. And then we're going to do a sum. And we're going to end up subtracting off the Ke omega. So we're going to add in a gain right here. We're going to feed. So our output's going to be over here. And so our output's going to get fed this direction. So we want to flip this because we're going to feed this over. And this is 0, 0 0.1509. And this is our Ke. And then we wire that up here and subtract it off. OK, so now we have our 
net voltage, and now we're going to do a transfer function to convert it into current. So this is going to be 0 0.0006 and 0 0.4. 1 over R plus SL. Okay, so now we have our current. So then the next thing is we can see right here that we're going to get our motor torque. So our motor torque is going to be KT times I. So we go over to here. We add in again 0 0.15. And this is our KT. Okay, so now we have our volt, now we have our motor torque. So now we have to subtract off so to get our net torque. So T net is going to be our T motor minus our T friction minus the T of the fan. So this is going to be T motor minus. You see our T friction is 0.177, and that's a fixed one. And then here is our fan torque. So this is minus 0 0.02 omega squared. Okay, so this is going to be a constant, and then this one is going to feed back from our output. So let's go and add these into Simulink. So we have a sum and we're going to add in two minuses. It looks a little funky but that's fine. So we're going to have to add in our constant which is 0 0.177 and this is our friction okay and then we got to feed in our output so we're going to have a gain we're going to flip this And this is 0 0.02. And then we need some way to square. Oh, look, there's a square. Whoops. Let's try this again. We have to flip this. Okay, so let's go back here. So now we have our net torque. So now we're ready for our dynamics. So we have the net torque is equal to J times alpha, which is equal to J times D omega DT, which is J times S times omega. So our omega is going to be equal to the T net times 1 over j times 1 over s. So we need to, so this is going to be, right here is going to be a gain and then this one is going to be a transfer function. So now we're ready to go grab j. So you see that we have, the fan has three large blades that weigh this much and are this long. And so we're going to treat those blades as rods around the central point. So we're going to end up getting something that looks like 
So we're going to treat those as three rods. So if we go over here to Wikipedia, we can see that we're doing rods rotated about this point, about their end. So that's one third ml squared. which is one third times the mass, which is five kilograms times two squared. And there's three of these. So we're gonna multiply this whole thing by three. So we have J of the fan equals one third times five times two squared times three. So this is the J of the fan equals 20 kilogram meters squared. Um, and then we're gonna take that and have to it add in the moment of inertia of our motor which is going to be way smaller, but might as well add it in. And you see, but we're not even going to put it in because this is completely negligent. Well, might as well leave it in because it isn't too hard anyways. Okay. So now we're going to come over here and we have to take our net torque times 1 over J. So we are going to say J total equals J of the fan plus 7.062 E minus 4. And then we're going to go 1 over J total. 0 0.5, so you see that 0 0.007 is negligible. That's kind of what we thought. So we're gonna add in again, 0 0.05, this is one over J. Okay, and then we're gonna add in a transfer function which is one over S. Okay, and then this is our omega. So now we're gonna take our omega and we are going to plug it in there. And we're gonna take our omega and plug it in there. Okay. So now that we have all of this, we want to convert this into RPMs. So we add on again, and we are going to multiply this times 60 divided by 2 times pi. Oh, there's our pi. Okay, good. They do have a pi in there. Okay. And we wire that in. Okay. So now we have this all set up. Let's just move this down a little bit, move this over. And so we're going to add in a scope so we can see what this looks like. Okay. And then just for fun, we're going to also add in a scope to look at our current, which is right here. Okay, so now we're going to run this. And we see that we're still kind of ramping up our fan. So we got to increase this. This is a big fan, apparently, so it takes a while to get... Okay, and so then it kind of comes up here, and here is our max. Now, 
There's lots of places that we could have made mistakes, so we're going to go back to what we did on deriving our uh, maximum and use that to check. Okay, so before, when we were trying to find steady state speed, let's go back to our steady state speed. So the steady state speed is when the motor torque equals, or let's see, Oh, if I can erase this. Okay, so we want to find out where our T net is equal to zero. That means that we stopped accelerating. So we want to find out where our T motor is equal to the T of the fan minus the T of the friction. Okay, so let's go to our motor torque. So we're going to say Tm equals Kt which is 0 0.15, which one was the KT? The KT is the 0.15, okay. Times our current, which is going to be 120 minus the KE 0 0.1509 omega divided by steady state. We don't have to worry about our inductance, so this is 0 0.4. Okay, so this is our current. And this is our KT, and we're setting this equal to 0 0.177 plus 0 0.02 omega squared. Okay, so then we just have to solve this for omega. So, So let's go to some place that we could do a nonlinear solve. And we are going to go 0 0.177 minus 0 0.02x squared minus 0.15 times 120 minus 0 0.1509 times x divided by 0.4. zero okay so we got complex numbers so I know I plugged something in right wrong and you see I want these to be equal so this is plus so we have these two minus that one equals zero okay let's see if that works better <clears throat> so I get two values, a negative one and a positive one. We want it to be going forward to have positive torque, not negative. So this is our answer. And then this is in radians per second. 45.95. Let's convert that over to RPM, so times 60 divided by 2 times pi. Oh, there it is, 439. Okay, let's go back to our Simulink and see if that's what we ended up with. So we're going to go tools, measurement, cursors. And you see we're in 439, so it looks like we did it correct. Okay. So let's go back and so we see here, let's just get our plot. So let's say it looks right around here. So that's more like 45 seconds. So let's just do it for 45 seconds.
and there's what our ramp up of our fan looks like. So since we have our current, let's go back and look at our current. So what we see here is that our current spikes up and then our current starts to drop off. It still needs to maintain a fairly high current because of the torque of the fan. So you can kind of see we get a little bit higher current as we're spinning our blades up, but then it settles down to a steady state piece here. But let's look at our ramp up. So you can kind of see because of our inductance, it takes about five milliseconds to speed up our current. So this is because of the inductance, but five milliseconds. So most of the time we don't really even care about that inductance. The inductance part is really very slow. And so then we are all done.